It is time for our Noble Bank and Trust post-game presser where we talk with special guests coming in. Typically, it's coaches, and we have a special guest coach with us tonight making the drive in from Pleasant Valley, head coach of the Pleasant Valley Raiders, the victorious Pleasant Valley Raiders tonight, Coach Jonathan Nix. Coach, welcome. Yeah. Glad to have you with us on High School Football Alabama after the game. And, uh, wow, uh, big win for your football team tonight. This was your opener. You played a jamboree last week mm -hmm. against Collinsville. But as far as counter games, this was the counter game tonight. And I know Donahoe, I was at their pep rally today. They were coming in on a high. But uh, tell us about the game tonight. Yeah, real excited. I mean, defense played lights out. I know, uh, you know, proud of both sides of the ball. Um, but, you know, last week, you know, Donahoe was down 22-3 to and, and, and made that comeback. So, you know, our kids knew that there was no quit in them. And so, uh, you know, the way the season started last year with them, you know, our kids losing 25 to nothing over there. Um, you know, we had a young team last year, you know. Um, and so all during the off season, that's all our kids have been talking about. You know, how can this team be different? How can we work out different? How can we, how can we be really a different breed? And so for them guys to go out there and do that tonight, so proud of them. You know, and so many kids have sacrificed so much this summer in the off season for a spring. And, um, you know, and we've had some key injuries too. And it just seems like next guy is stepping up. And, and anytime something happens, I mean, the team's got a calm factor this year. And I think that calm factor is just a little more confident. Coach uh, Gerhard Bathingani has got the highlights of the game tonight. Yeah. We're going to take you out to Raider Field at Pleasant Valley and look at some of the highlights of this game. Gerhard, take us through the highlights of this Pleasant Valley win over Donahoe tonight. Yeah, it's a really good one. Our Bailey Morris was out there a little bit earlier today. Uh, Pleasant Valley, as, as you mentioned earlier, uh, John and Coach, one of the teams that we think can make some noise here this year, and they got a big win today. Let's go over to the Pleasant Valley area for this big game. Coach, great job with the field. It looks really, really good here. And, and you look really good here. And there's Coach, you know, uh, doing his job right there, getting his team settled in there in the uh, first half. And speaking of the first half, this is where we'll start early on. we got a nice pass here, Braxton Saucer to number 28, Holt Bentley, right on the sideline. Just how you draw it up, Coach. Fantastic. Connection right there. A little bit later, it's a handoff to Bentley. Picks up another first down. Give him about 12 yards there and a big run. A little bit later on, handoff goes to number one, Jaden Pruitt. Pruitt finds the outside, comes back inside, come, come back again. Sparks. Sparks right here. Sparks. I'm not blaming Bailey on that one, but I'm blaming Bailey on that one. Sparks in there with a nice run right there. Thank you for correcting that one, Coach. A few plays later, it is Salster calling his own number. He's into the end zone. Raiders on the board. Really happy out there in Pleasant Valley. An early 7-0 lead for the Raiders. Falcons a little bit later on on the offense. It is Petros Folsom connecting, connecting there with Logan Melton. Another sideline catch. You guys have one. They answered there with one a few plays later. They capitalize with the kicking, the kicking game. Field goal is good. And that was the score as our cameras left with a 7-0 lead for you guys, Pleasant Valley. And you guys went on to roll on. That means, you know, you guys uh, played really well later in the ball game. Um, I know you talked with John about how, the, how this game rolled out. But your second half must have been really strong both offensively and defensively. It was. Uh, you know, it was – I mean, it was close there at halftime. There was a couple of possessions that I felt like that uh, – you know, that we kind of gave up a little bit. Uh, you know, we had a we had a false start, um, and that set us behind on a, instead of a third and one, we go to a third and six, and then we had a kid jump that gave them uh, a chance for that field goal. Right. Uh, so li little things like, and that's what we talked about halftime. Just don't beat yourself. You know, good teams don't beat their self, and mm -hmm. that's something we're trying to work on every week to, to be better at. Ball security, you know, we won the turnover margin, had two key interceptions, and, uh, you know, anytime you win the turnover margin, you can protect the ball. And, uh, you know, we just didn't – there were some plays in the first half that I felt like if we strained a little longer on our blocks, you know, instead of the 12-yard gain, right. it's the 19-yard gain. Yeah, yeah. Instead of the 19-yard gain, somebody's busting it for a touchdown. Right. And so that was, you know, but later on in the game, those started clicking. So, I mean, we had several guys go for, for, for big offensive numbers. And it was really a collaboration of, you know, four or five guys. And, uh, you know, anytime you got four or five guys, it's around 75-yard mark or so, mm -hmm. you know, you got to give hats off to O-line. Yep. Nah, man, so proud of them big guys. Well, I was going to say, Coach, you know, you talked about how young you were last year. But two names that Gearhart kept bringing up a while ago, and I'm not individuals, so don't get me there. 
But Braxton Soster and Jaden Sparks, your quarterback's an eighth grader. He is. Jaden Sparks is a ninth grader. We kept talking about those guys. You know, Sparks tonight, 50, 55 yards rushing, 40 yards receiving. He had 95 total yards. And then your quarterback has a 16-yard touchdown run, a one-yard touchdown run, and was five of seven for 76 yards passing. But here's what I'm getting to. You had 309 yards rushing tonight. Mm -hmm. You had 105 passing for 415 total. Now tell me about those big hogs. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm leading into. I'm telling you, you know, the line was just, you know, what well, they really took on it to another gear. And, and we tried, you know, like we went from a 28-man roster to now we got 43 on the roster. Right. And so what we're able to do uh, is what teams have been doing to us in 3A for a long time is, you know, those kids don't play both ways on O-line and D-line. And you see that in the second half mm -hmm. start paying big dividends. Well, you, you know, the one thing about that, your numbers have jumped. I know coaches are out there beating the bushes and you're in there in the hallways, but those players have something to do with that too. That's right. About getting those guys out and saying, look, yeah. come be a part of something special. That's right. And something may be brewing up there. Uh, definitely. You know, hey, uh, good teams are led by players. That's for dang sure. Right. And uh, I got some really good players on the team right now. And, you know, in the leadership, you know, some of these guys like Gray Knight and some of these guys up front, you know, they were starting last year as freshmen. You know, and they were starting in one of the toughest regions. And then they go to the offseason. Like a kid like Dason Vick that had a, had a great game tonight on both sides of the ball. I mean, this kid played last year at 155, and now he's playing at 185. Mm -hmm. Dalton Haynes, who had another great game, he played last year at 185, and he's about 225. So their commitment to the weight room is paying off big time, not just on the O-line, but in the backfield and everybody. And the weight room you have is second to none, especially in your classification. You know, the county come through and, and really helped y'all out with that weight room. That weight room is impressive, but I got to see a little, you know, because I'm friends with you on social media, so mm -hmm. I was really impressed with your, like, little camp where y'all went off together and was That's doing right. those things. You're out in the water. I mean, y'all did a little yeah. bit of everything, but it looks like your team really came together when y'all got away from everybody, got away from the mamas and daddies and girlfriends and the That's telephones. Right. It looks like y'all really came together. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, the camp was great. I mean, we, we spent, you know, we spent close to 72 hours with them or so. And so, well, that's a long time. I mean, that's a long time. With <laughs> you know, when we go, we went to big time entertainment. We went yes. uh, rafting uh, to No Worries. And, and, and so to some of them kids, that was like a summer vacation for them. Yes. And there's some kids that, that sometimes you don't realize that might be all the summer vacation. But I think a team that enjoys doing stuff with each other is a dangerous team. That's right. Uni Coach, unity is a strong thing. Coach, uh, we're going to talk about 2A now, and you are dropping from Class 3A to 2A. You mentioned you were in a tough region, and now you're in a tough region, but it's nothing like the region you were in. Just talk about uh, coming down from 3A to 2A, and probably a lot of folks would argue that maybe that's where Pleasant Valley really should be, is in Class 2A as far as enrollment and things like that. Uh, specifically next week. I know this is a special game for you next week yeah. for a lot of reasons that you can talk about. But overall, your impressions of this region and the game next week with West End. Uh, you know, we want to go 1-0 and next week. That's really it. I mean, we had to sit down with our kids after the season was over, and this is just, you know, things that sometimes you take for granted. I'm not sure the whole team knew what the region games meant. I mean, we were so young with some of the kids. It was like, Coach, I thought we were supposed to win them all. But these determine if you make the playoffs, guys. And so, like, we did some of that in offseason. Just went back to basics. Guys, we're in a seven-team region. You know, that means four of us is moving on and three of us are not. These are our region games. Here's the tiebreaker stuff. Yeah. And it just gives them more ownership of understanding football. And so, so excited, you know. And look, Southeastern and Cleveland and, and you know, Locust Fork, um, Holly Pond drops down from 3A. You know, Gaston's, you know, starting out good right now. And so, I mean, you've got some really good teams in this region too. And so, you just got to take it one step at a time. You know, I know you said something about the logo, and I got to give a shout out to Coach Mintz. I, mean, I was going to say, did he do that Brian one? Ran, you know, and one thing that I love that uh, Brian kind of always, you know, at, at Raglan, he said, if you're going to eat an elephant, you got to eat it one bite at a time. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, that's what we've got to do is, you know, I told the kids before the game, tonight's game, whatever happens will not define you. 
the body of work that you've done. So this game's not going to define you. We don't need you to be anything different than yourself tonight. Yourself is good enough for us. And so let go out there and just play the game with no fear. And I think sometimes, you know, you get it in your head, hey, you've never, you've never won a playoff game at this school. It's never been done. And so I think they hear that. But if, you know, the person that believes they can, the person that believes they can are both right. And so I think this team is one of those that, you know, they're one step closer to believing a little more. Yeah, Coach, uh, as we take a look at the – I think we've got the graphic here of Class 2A Region 6, and you just went through the teams there. Of course, for folks that, you know, remember back to last year, Cleveland was the state runner-up. And then you got, as you mentioned there, uh, Southeastern, I think is going to be a surprise team there. West End is playing really good football right now. Uh, I think they actually are 2-0 and now because they won tonight. So uh, they beat Susan Moore 24 to nothing. But uh, you are right in the mix of that. Uh, I think Pleasant Valley uh, is, uh, I think, uh, probably, I'm not going to put the pressure on you right now, but I think you're a playoff team. I think in that region right there, you've got as good a shot as anybody in getting to the playoffs. And, and then getting into the playoffs, the big thing is, I know what you mentioned talking about winning a playoff game that's and making right. some history there. And that's certainly possible, I think, with this team this year. I really do, too. You know, I think this team's just got to keep keep their nose down and they just got to go back to work and, then, you know, uh, and there's so many mistakes that you can look at even in tonight. I know everybody will see the score, but, you know, we talked about it when we finished the game. Hey, go celebrate, go have fun with it. But Sunday when we come to breakdown and then when you get your sheets and stuff, look and see what you've messed up on and let's go fix that because there's a lot of things that we could have done different. There's a lot of opportunities that, I mean, Coach Preston, Coach, Coach Hamby and Coach Caldwell put together a great defensive plan. I mean, one of their touchdowns at the end, we had a younger guy that, that fumbled the ball and they picked it up and they got a they got a defensive touchdown. So real proud of the defense tonight and, and offense, all of the guys. And I have to give a, I have to shout out because you just mentioned him, Blake Sewell for Donahoe picked the fumble up, yep. running back sixty something yards. The Elliott kid for them had like ten tackles tonight, Lucas Elliott. So mm-hmm. you know I want to give out because them kids played hard too. They did. On the other side, you know their quarterback was 12, 28, 156 yards, but y'all had two interceptions, and they was those were big plays for yep. y'all. And, and tell Coach Preston. I coached him, too. <laughs> and Coach Short loves him, and he's doing a good job. <laughs> yep, he's a good guy. Coach, before we let you get out of here, one more question for you. Both, most folks may not know, and this is really unique to me, you married into a music family. And a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times, <laughs> uh, a lot of times, you know, football coaches, I mean, you're married to a band director, and That's you right. married into That's a right. band family here. So i got to yeah. ask you, What's your favorite kind of music there? We, somebody, what, we want to know Jonathan Nix better. What's the favorite kind of the music that you're listening oh, to when man, you're in the car? Oh, man, this is a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, my wife, she is a very good trumpet player. Wow. And, um, and so, you know, a lot of times I'll try to, try to sneak in there and grab the trumpet and play a little bit in the backyard. And, and I can say this. Wow, hey, I can say you. this. There's not a stray dog around that doesn't come. And so most, most of the time, most of the time, she hides it. And so uh, I think now she's leaving it at Ohatchee every day because she knows I go in there. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a terrible sound. It's a terrible sound. So, but, you know, hey, it's just like on Friday night, you know, the band directors, they're working their tail off too with yeah. kids. You've got cheerleading staffs that's working their tail off. You've got everybody that comes together on a Friday night. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're pouring into kids. We've been given a platform, and that's what me and my wife both believe in. Both of us has been given a platform, and it's our job to try to share with these kids, you know, our love for them. Coach, congratulations on the big win tonight. Thank you for being with us here on our Noble Bank and Trust post-game presser. Best of luck to you and the Raiders the rest of the ways you get into region play. I know a special game for you next week as well. Time now for our Farmers and Merchants Bank yeah. Player of the 